Good morning and welcome to all of you. In a special way, we welcome all those people who are viewing uh, this Mass from their homes. Uh, and so let us begin on this Friday, as always, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with all of you as we prepare to celebrate and to enter into these sacred and profound mysteries. Let's pause for a moment and call to mind all of our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy, his healing, and his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all of us. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, you plead for each one of us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on each one of us. Forgive us all of our sins. Bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We give you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts, to offer you worthy prayer, and to ever extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the, the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamal, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the Apostles to be put outside for a short time. And he said to the Sanhedrin, fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thudius appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, and he was killed. And all those who were loyal to him were disbanded, and it came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him. But he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. 
They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage, be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for, for them to eat? He said this to test him. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for the, each of them to have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are those for so many? Jesus said, have them recline. Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks. And distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us, Jesus tells us, unless we become like a little child, we will never enter into the kingdom of heaven. And the little child in today's gospel, the little boy 
in today's gospel shows us why. The little boy in today's gospel puts the apostles to shame. Scripture tells us that Jesus tests the other apostles and they fail that test miserably. The other apostles, uh, Philip and Andrew, they do what we try to do. We try to figure out God's ways, how God works in the world. We try to figure out how God is going to solve our problems. Rationally, logically, reasonably, you and me, like the apostles, we try to figure out how God is going to help us. But that's why they call it a miracle. A miracle is beyond logic and reason. The miracle is outside the natural order. That's why they call it supernatural. And, uh, but notice that the apostles are thinking to themselves, how is this going to look? Five barley loaves and two fish? They say that. What good is this for so many? And, you know, it made me think there's an old saying, for the miraculous to take place, we must look, we must risk looking ridiculous. For the miraculous to take place, we must risk looking ridiculous. And that's why the little boy is the hero here. He, we should pray to this unnamed boy. Maybe he should be our patron saint because he steps out in faith. He's not worried about risking embarrassment. He's not worried what it looks like. He's not trying to figure out how God's going to work. He's not trying to predict how the miracle's going to happen. No. The little boy simply steps out. He has bold, audacious faith. We should learn from him. He gives Christ what he has. The little that it is. He gives Christ everything he has as an oblation, an offering. And notice what Jesus does. He doesn't reject it. He accepts the little boy's offering. He blesses it. He transforms it. He turns it into abundance. Yes, the little boy should be our patron saint. We should pray to this little child. And, but more importantly, we should imitate his faith because he has a bold, audacious faith. He doesn't try to predict how God's going to work, how God's going to solve our problems. The little boy simply realizes that with God, all things are possible. Turning to Jesus Christ, the source of all miracles, the source of every blessing and gift, let us turn our hearts to him. We pray in a special way for Pope Francis and all the bishops and the priests, all the clergy, all the deacons, that they proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, all those people who've lost their lives, all the family members who mourn their loss, all the healthcare workers and doctors, first responders, 
fast food workers, all those people, service workers, clergy who are on the front lines and minister to these people who are sick and dying. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray in a special way for Denise and Gina, for Denise who passed away and her daughter Gina and Mike and all their family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray, pray for Emma Kretz, who also passed away, for Emma Kretz and uh, her, her son Ray, for Rich Hayes. We pray for Sally Detloff, who passed away also, and her good husband Jerry, for Joe and Linda Pruell, Mr. and Mrs. Joe Bellino, for Tony Dorda, for JP and Donna and their family, and for all of you, all your family members, living and deceased. Let's pause now for all your loved ones and all your intentions. And for the Neri, Rogers, and Lee family, the Rossetti family as well. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. Become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of all of my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice, yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Accept in compassion, O oh Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal, the gifts that last forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, the children of the light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and all the heavenly powers, with all the angelic hosts, sing together the song of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, Lord, in a special way, your faithful servant, Donald G. Brown, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Donald G. Brown, who is united with your son Jesus in a death like his, that Donald may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our uh, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Andrew and St. Philip, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, and safe from all worry and fear and distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, Jesus Christ, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you and all your family members, all your loved ones, living and deceased, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Have a wonderful weekend.